so I wanted to say something uh, to, to Meg, to Meg here, and thinking about what I wanted to say, this is going to be kind of a long story, so I apologize to begin with. Um, but thinking about what I wanted to say here, I figured maybe it would be a good idea for me to kind of look back at my emails and, and see when I actually first became personally acquainted with Meg. And, and so in doing this, um, I think it's my story that I emailed her, you know, hi Meg, I'm a second year graduate student, I really want to go to this conference, which she had just emailed about, it was a conference, the, the fourth international conference on women in physics, and it was going to be held in South Africa. And so she's like, you know, of course, like, I have all this time, please come to my office and, and I talk about it. So, so I go and we talk about it and I end up applying to this conference. And a second email which I, which I sent to Meg was a couple months later and I say, Meg, I'm so disappointed I wasn't accepted to this conference. I'm so disappointed, could I please come to your office again to meet with you, right? Of course, so you have all this free time, right? So <laughs> I mean, what else do you do but, but worry about graduate student concerns, right? So, um, so I go to her office and it ended up being such a useful meeting, right? Um, if, you, if you remember this quite, uh, I remember this quite um, well that I was so disappointed that I wasn't going to be able to participate in this amazing conference. And so Meg had this brilliant idea of, well, why don't we webcast this conference, right? Why don't we um, basically post webcasts of, of the conference so that people who are not able to attend um, would still be able to participate and, and uh, kind of be present and, and um, be present in, in the conversation. And so I was thinking, yeah, it's a great idea, Meg. Um, you know, how do we do this? And so she sends off a thousand emails to the local organizing committee in South Africa and to the other US team leaders, like, you know, we have this idea. and. And uh, you know she, she gets in touch with all these people, and she eventually emails me and this amazing, um, brilliant undergraduate student, Michelle Defoe, um, who we all know like tragically passed like, two years ago. Um, and so I, I can't dwell on this now, or else um, we'll be affected by this again. Um, but basically, so Meg, you know, gave us gave us this task. You know, and not everyone is so supportive of this webcasting, but I really need your help to do this. And, and what's so interesting about this in particular is that Meg is in here asking for our help. And what is interesting about this is that. She only she did this quite selflessly, right? When we were, I went to her office in distress, right? I can't participate in this conference, and I'm really upset about it. And she had this brilliant idea to do this webcasting selflessly, right? So that I can still participate in this conference, and that others can participate in this conference. And now she's asking for our help, for our benefit, right? And so we're, you know, Michelle and I are so excited to so excited to do this. And basically, over the next month, we, we are really um, trying to get a lot of this work done, and, and with, with Meg and. Um, trying to figure out how to get the video in the first place. How do we have a camera crew first of all, and how are we going to, you know, get the video from the from the conference in South Africa over to the university to, to send it to Yale so that we can edit it. And all this is going to happen within one day of the of the actual talk, and we're going to upload it um, so that others can can um, be present in the conference. And so we work for for the next month, and, and basically about a couple of weeks before the conference, um, we were lucky enough that a couple of the US team leaders were, were you know thought this was so valuable that. They suggested, you know, wouldn't it be really great if Emma and Michelle could actually be in South Africa? And I was like, oh my gosh, my office. <laughs> 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 South Africa. <laughs> yes, I want to go. Um, and so, so two weeks later, I'm, I'm on a plane. And, and so just, it, this was all through, through Meg's selflessness, right? Through, through Meg's brilliant idea and through her selflessness um, to, care, to care about my well-being and, and my desire to, to participate in this. Um, and so I found myself in South Africa. And another kind of side story of something that happened, which has kind of ended up in a, in a, in a, kind of a two-year project, um, is that in this conference there was there were several parallel sessions, um, and one was dedicated to attracting girls to physics. And there I, I became acquainted with this man, Ram, who was a member of the Indian Academy of Sciences, and he was presenting on on a um, his recently published book, which is essentially a compilation of, of 90 um, autobiographical essays written by prominent women physicists in India. So I'm sitting in this in this workshop with this other postdoc, Rhiannon, who was a, was also a member of the US team. I don't believe he were there at the time, but. We were listening to him talk about this book, and we had this idea, kind of actually simultaneously, wouldn't it be fantastic if we made an analogous book for the United States, written by American women physicists to inspire the next generation of, of American, um, of, uh, you know, the next generation of American um, scientists. And so, you know, we come back from South Africa, and the thing is, you know, good ideas, yeah, okay, good ideas are important, right? So it's good to have good ideas, but to actually implement good ideas is another, is a whole other thing, right? And a uh, second year graduate student saying, oh yeah, let's do a book and, and um, <laughs> let's get you know, uh, 90 other women, you know, professors around the country to, to participate in this and, and see this as worthwhile is something that I was not able to do you know, by myself. So I emailed Meg, of course, because <laughs> we both can help me, right? And Sarah as well, my advisor. Um, and I say, you know, here's this idea, how can you do this? And so Meg and Sarah were like, oh yes, uh, of course we can, right? I mean, who, I mean, who does that, right? But they were, yes, they were like, this is such a great idea. And not only do they, 
verbally support um, this idea, but they were like, okay, so here are ideas for, for publishers, and, and uh, I think self-publishing is a good option, and I think these are these women we can ask, and, and not only that, but yes, we'll contribute an essay to sort of spearhead this effort, right? Which was infinitely important, right, to the effort, the, to, to convince the other 35 women that this was a worthwhile uh, thing to, to participate in. And so, therefore, ended like, so now, here we are, and it's like the book is going to be published in, in like two weeks, and, and, it, and it's not, it wouldn't have been possible without your little bits of support. Okay, so there ends my story, and so what do I derive from this? <laughs> Gosh, okay, so, yeah. so what do I derive from this in terms of your, your um, service as chair, in terms of my relationship with you over the past couple of years? I can say kind of two things, right? That it's useful to have a mentor who is, who is supportive verbally, right? Who, who supports you in words, right? Who says, oh yeah, great idea, yeah, it's a really great idea, go for it. Right? And it's another, it's, but it's much more useful and lasting to have a mentor who, who uh, is supportive through her actions, right? Okay, so that, that's number one. Number two, I'm going to make a broad statement about life um, <laughs> that, I, that, I find, that I find is true, like this, that the little, the little good things, little kind, good, helpful things that you do for people, you don't always get to see the lasting impact that it has on the person that you're helping. Right? You know, it's like 20 seconds, you do something really nice for someone, or you meet with me for five minutes. You don't really necessarily see the lasting impact that that has. And so, what I'm saying is that every, every little thing that you did over the last couple of years for me, the meeting in your office for five minutes to discuss applying for the conference, right? If I didn't apply for the conference, I wouldn't have been rejected. If I was rejected, <laughs> I wouldn't have said, oh yeah, please come to my office and, and let's talk about it. You know, and I, if I didn't go to your office, you wouldn't have had this brilliant idea to do the webcasting. And if you didn't have this brilliant idea, I wouldn't have done webcasting with Michelle. Right? And, and then, given that, I wouldn't have been in South Africa. And I wouldn't have been inspired to do this book. And, and the book has such, I'm so excited, right, to, to share it, share it to the next generation. I, I wouldn't have had this opportunity to do this book if you weren't, you know, if you didn't give me your essay as, like a, as a first example or as, you know, you didn't say, yes, I'm going to go for it, right? All these things would not have happened. And, and so all these, all these um, little kind things that you did for me has really impacted, has made a difference um, in my trajectory in graduate school and in my, in my graduate school experience that I've gained so much confidence by doing this project and that, I could have, that I, this project could have like a really positive effect on the next generation. Um, so you've taught me sort of not only have you been a role model in terms of your in terms of your science and in terms of um, kind of thinking about what kind of scientist do I want to be kind of uh, on the next level, but also in terms of, I've learned how to be a mentor, right? That that like you, I want to be I want to be a mentor like you to those below me. Um, and so all these all these little things you've done for me are going to have a lasting impact, even though you know you served as chair for six years. Your your um, sort of your legacy or whatever will be carried and continued through those who, who fall below you. Um, and so I just wanted to, I want to toast you and to say thank you for everything you've done for me. And, and, uh, <laughs> Show yeah. your book and want to say something about your book, your table of contents, etc. So can you make a couple slides for me? Yeah. <laughs>